Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wiley I'm here. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the differences that I see between a full frame sensor and a crop sensor. As many of you might know, I've kind of sold off some of my crop sensor bodies and I'm sitting on some cash and I'm kind of curious on where I'm actually going to put that money to use. So I've been trying various systems that I've already known. I'm still sticking with the Fujifilm system. In fact, I'm still recording on my X-H1. I love their camera bodies. I still have three of them, but in the future, I might actually move over to some of the other brands for specific types of photography or for video. So one of the things that I do want to talk about is that since I've been using crop sensors for the last two and a half years, pretty exclusively, I have have gotten a chance to go back and tried some of the full frame cameras again from Canon and from Nikon and I kind of want to give you my take on them so Nikon is definitely going to be one of the brands that I will be covering pretty soon and Canon a little bit later because they just had new camera bodies come out but they're not available yet for rental so I'm definitely going to wait on that before I kind of give you my full opinions on that but let's go ahead and get back into the subject of crop versus full frame now when it comes to crop sensors I've actually really enjoyed using them definitely the Fujifilm system has been terrific because they have great colors it's a very easy workflow for both video and for photography but there are some limitations to crop sensors that I have noticed now that I've gotten a chance to compare the two so one of the things that I will say is that basically when I'm using a crop sensor camera pretty much anything from the wide angle so we're talking about eight millimeters all the way up to probably 150 millimeters. I really don't see enough of a difference between a crop sensor and a full frame sensor for me to really care about it. Pretty much the, all of the pictures, they come out really well. I definitely am very happy with the image quality, but I've said this many times on my channel, I'm definitely not a pixel peeper, so I don't really care about that ultra fine detail that most people really don't look for when they actually look at a photo or a video. Now keep in mind that I'm speaking as an enthusiast, I'm not speaking as as a professional if you're a professional you're going to have different metrics that you're going to have to go with and it really all depends on what you can actually charge for your work but as an enthusiast that occasionally freelances for professional work when somebody asks me to i definitely don't have any issues with using a crop sensor camera but there is a certain point at the telephoto range where i think you actually lose a little bit and that's what i'm going to get into next so one of the things that i do love doing is i love covering aviation and when you do aviation you definitely need telephoto lenses so you're using at minimum of 70 to 200 a 100 to 400 is definitely a little bit better because those aircrafts are a bit out and one of the things that i've noticed between taking pictures with a crop sensor versus a full frame is that on the fujifilm cameras what i've noticed is that when i do look at those pictures there's kind of a I don't really have an exact word for it, but there's kind of like a film or a grain to the pictures that I really don't like. Now, this is something that you do have to look for, but once you actually see it, you kind of can't unsee it. Now, the good thing about this is that since I take all of my pictures in RAW, I can definitely remove it with some RAW editing, but that kind of contradicts what I was just saying a couple of minutes ago, which is I really enjoy the fast workflow. I'm taking some of the time to remove it, which adds to my workflow, which definitely slows me down. This is something that I'm not seeing with the Nikon full frame sensors or the Canon full frame sensors. So I really do enjoy that aspect of full frame cameras when it comes to telephoto lenses. Now, to be fair, Fuji does have that $6,000 lens, which is terrific, but at $6,000, I can easily get a used Nikon Z7 and a really good telephoto from either Sigma or Nikon to get pretty much the better results, to be honest with you. There's also the fact that Fuji is coming out with new telephoto lenses, but I have a feeling that in order to actually get to the image quality that I'm kind of getting with full frame, it's going to have to be a really expensive lens. And pretty much once you get past $4,000 for a lens, it's actually just better for me to go get a full frame system to do what I want on the telephoto side of things. So it'll be very interesting to see if Fujifilms can step up their game on the telephoto side without having to get into really expensive glass. This is something that I really haven't thought 
thought about before, but now that I've taken a step back and I started comparing camera systems again, I figured I'd actually just talk to you about it and give you my take on, you know, crop sensor versus full frame. Because honestly, for a day-to-day -day camera, I still really love using crop sensored cameras because of their small size and weight. And also, it still has great image quality. Pretty much all cameras in the last three years, they're going to give you awesome pictures. So it's not something that I worry about. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, I definitely want a few videos talking about other camera brands ecosystems and where I think they fall because you are seeing some divergences with each camera brand and what they're trying to do. And it's going to be very interesting to see in the next couple of years which one resonates with all of the consumers and the professionals and whether or not these camera brands are going to continue to grow or they're going to shrink. If you have an opinion on crop sensor versus full frame, definitely let me know in the comments below. We'd love to talk to you about it, but that's kind of my overall opinions on it right now. Hopefully it was helpful to you or at least entertaining for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're safe and I will see you in the next episode.